Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rachel, aka Sleepy Curls ASMR. I create Christian based ASMR videos, and today I'm just going to be sharing my story on how the Lord delivered me from pornography. So, I was first exposed to pornographic images um, age 12. In sixth grade, I heard some boys talking about a certain website in my class and being the curious person that I am, I went home and I googled it online, not knowing about search history back then, and um, I came across some images that I wasn't maybe ready or prepared for and I think um, kind of planted a seed within me. and. Um, as far as like how I started to think about how I should present myself, how I thought other people wanted me um, or expected me to look. Um, and again, all at the age of 12. So I was still very young. I was still a child. And these were adult women that I was looking at. Um, I had gotten into trouble from looking that up and um, some, some other things. And that's a, a whole other story on just like shame and um, how that's even related to pornography. But anyway, that, that was kind of my first exposure to pornography, which kind of led me to going into junior high. Um, technology opened a lot of doors too. So back then there were those anonymous chat rooms. I don't know if any of you remember them, but um, I would definitely go in there and talk to who knows who, who knows how old they were, um, who knows who they, who they were pretending to be. It was all very scary, but at the time I thought it was fun. I thought it was, you know, thrilling and this secret that I had and I didn't know about the word sexting back then but that's definitely I was definitely something I was taking um partaking in um so yeah and I'm sure I don't really remember if I actually would watch porn in junior high and high school just because I was using my parents computer and I later then found out about search history and I don't think I ever wanted you know, of course, my parents to um, find that out, but actually, as I'm talking, I do remember going to my friend's house, my closest friend at the time, and we would actually watch porn together because we thought it was funny, like we would make fun of how weird it was, and um, again, still being very young, I think we were in high school at this time, and um, not being aware of just like how this was planting a seed and how this was shaping us and um, just the impact it would later have on my life. Um, so yeah, kind of going back a little bit back to, well, I guess it was like high school technically. It was the summer before high school. Um, I actually ended up like sending an inappropriate picture to someone else because I thought like, oh, that's just something that you do. That's how you get attention. And at the time I was desperately wanting attention. I was wanting affection and to be loved and seen and known, you know, those things that we all want. Um, but I didn't really have guidance as far as like how to go about that in a healthy way. Um, and I think a lot of young girls are impressionable and vulnerable to this type of behavior, unfortunately. And I think that's why it's so important to be raised in a strong Christian household and be involved in church and have a community that looks out for you and your family, um, which at the time I thought we had. But um, and even if you do have that, like we're all still sinners, so we could still that could still go um, unnoticed. So anyway, going into high school, um, that also shaped like again, like how I thought I was supposed to act or how I thought I was supposed to get attention because I thought like, okay, I can't just be my myself and be noticed. I have to be really flirty and I have to pursue guys. I have to chase them for them to notice me. I wasn't ever really allowing people to get to know me for who I truly was and allowing them to pursue me. I think 
when you have a wound either from your father or your mother or both in my case um I was kind of letting that lead me because I didn't have a relationship with Jesus at the time. He was in the background um, guiding and protecting me, but I wasn't really, I wasn't really pursuing him. And so I was letting my hormones, I was letting the need for attention, I was letting so many things kind of drive that behavior. Um, so yeah, I definitely was getting attention from boys in all the wrong ways um, and then I graduate high school and I think that's more so when I when pornography started to become more of a problem for me um, I was dating someone at the time and he introduced pornography back into my life I think um, he would talk about his favorite porn star and we would even watch it together and um, I think around that time I was probably 18, so still pretty young, still very impressionable, and um, I still thought, okay, you know, like even even my boyfriend thinks this is okay. This is okay. Even um, my boyfriend doesn't see a problem with this. We were both professing to be Christians at the time, and yet we were, you know being so deceived by our sin and by the evilness that pornography was and i think i just developed this very um strong insecurity within myself um i developed strong feelings of possessiveness and jealousy and control because you know if if this is this is who he likes if this is the type of behavior that he likes what's to say that he's gonna like me? And that even affected um, our sex life because I thought, okay, well, in order to, um, you know, like keep someone, I have to have sex with them all the time or um, it, it even affected how I saw him. I saw him as just an object to be used for my pleasure rather than a healthy, loving relationship. And so um, that was obviously very toxic and detrimental and that, that relationship ended up um, ending. Thankfully, I think that was all for the best. Um, and so over the years, I would still occasionally watch porn. Um, I would always feel very guilty afterwards. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was a sin, but I don't think I really hated it yet. I think I was kind of just like, oh yeah, this is something that you know, guys mostly struggle with. I know some girls struggle with it and it's not that serious. Like I still have this under control. Um, and then I really started to hate sin or that sin in particular um, because I started to get more exposed to people who are in the pornography business and their stories and um, what that was like for them and how they got out and how it still affected them even after being out um and my heart started to break for these women and even men um that were in this this industry and i realized oh a lot of a lot of these people in these videos don't even want to be there like they're not enjoying themselves as pornography tries to get us to believe they're not actually um finding pleasure in this they're not um, enjoying this, this isn't good. Um, and I think that's when my heart really started to change. And and then, of course, I, like I started to hear more about child pornography and pornography that gets into just such disgusting and evil areas because once you start and you build that tolerance for just um, like basic pornography, then you have to like keep going to more and more serious levels in order to feel the same um, response. And thankfully, I didn't get to that point um, by the grace of God, but I know a lot of men, um, and I'm sure women too, have gotten to that point and I can see how it has such a stronghold on their lives. Um, so then I entered my most previous, uh, my most recent relationship, which was about two years ago, and um, 
That was an interesting interaction because I found out that he had just watched pornography um, like earlier that week as we were getting to know each other and instead of you know saying to myself okay this is a red flag this person clearly isn't ready to date they're still struggling with this i don't think they have any accountability in their life i decided to to stay in the relationship and um looking back now a lot of that was out of manipulation this person was saying well i would hope that you know if i'm struggling with something like you would stick around and you wouldn't just like write me off I think both of us, neither of us were ready to date at that time, but we just wanted to and so we kind of just jumped right in. But I'm so thankful for where I'm at now at my church because we do have accountability and we do have community and dating and community um, I've learned is, is such a blessing and you feel so safe because you can ask other people, hey, is this, is this person ready to date based on what you know about them, based on what they're talking about in their small group with you? Um, are they struggling with any sin issues right now that could kind of um, affect our relationship? So I really encourage, um, even if you're a Christian, if you're not plugged into a church and if you don't have a community, please get one. I know it can be difficult, but I mean, I would try, I would pray and, and really try to get plugged in because it is life changing. It's been life changing for me. Um, so yeah, anyways, going back to that relationship, I decided to stay in it. But because I knew he had recently watched porn and, and because I knew how that affects you um, and I knew how he struggled with it in the past and how it had such a stronghold on him, um, again, those the, that performance came up for me. I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have to perform again. I'm, I can't let him get to know the real me. I have to give him just my body. Um, and even though, again, we were both Christians, we fell into that sin. Um, I shouldn't even say we fell into it. We actively chose that over and over and over again. And we, we didn't stop. Um, we would feel really guilty afterwards. We would pray about it, but we just went about it the wrong way. We didn't have any accountability. Um, and so because I had known about him watching porn, then I started to... Um, kind of freak out and some of my controlling behaviors came up because I was concerned, okay, like how do I know he's not watch watching porn? And that was always in the back of my mind. Is he watching porn right now? Is he watching porn? Is he talking to someone in an inappropriate way? What are his boundaries like? To the point that I was obsessing about it so much that I actually started watching porn again. And then I even blamed it on him, which was so not right. And I mean, I needed to take responsibility for myself. Um, but it just turned into a really toxic relationship. Again, I think we were viewing each other as more of objects uh, to get temporary pleasure rather than loving each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. And pointing each other back to God and that's just something I will never do again is date outside of a, a solid Christian community because it is just detrimental um, and it, it really shows like how sinful we are and how deep our pride and our ego goes when we say things like we well, I have it under control we can do this on our own you know we're praying about it we're talking about it um, but if you're isolated from other people who aren't speaking into your life like that's that's not going to be helpful then you're just both like feeding off of each other and if you're both in an unhealthy place that's not that's not healthy that's not going to be beneficial so thankfully a few months after that relationship ended which again was more than two years ago was about was the last time that i actively sought out pornography and so it's been more than two years now that i've watched porn and I just thank God for that so much. Um, he's done a work in my life for sure. Uh, the Christian community that I have in my life um, definitely plays a huge part in that. Um, I definitely still struggle with lust and masturbation occasionally, but I'm, I'm hoping that two years from now I can also say 
that God has delivered me from that as well. Um, I've seen what God can do and for anyone out there that's struggling with uh, pornography or lust of any kind, sexual immorality, temptation, um, first I would confess that. I would bring that to a trusted friend or pastor. Um, I would get plugged into a solid Christian gospel-centered church if you aren't already. Um, and then if it's still if it's still a problem, if, if it's more of an addiction at that point, I would even seek um, counseling, get some help for that to really um, stay accountable and kind of look at the root causes for that sin. Um, and now I'm, I'm starting to see men, you know, as more than just objects or more than like my possible future spouse. Right, like it's more like, okay, let me get to know this person as a brother in Christ and just as a, a friend and I've never had that before. Um, it's been so refreshing to kind of like take that pressure off and like really get to know people for who they are and to slowly in appropriate ways um, let them get to know me for who I am. It's definitely still a work in progress. I'm still a very private person um, just because of my past and things that I've gone through and fears, but I, I do believe that God's working on my heart. And yeah, if you have a similar story, um, you know, please leave a comment. Like, uh, without going into too much detail, just share how God's delivered you from sexual sin. If you're currently struggling with this right now, uh, feel free to uh, leave a comment too and just ask the others to pray for you. I have so many great uh, people that follow this channel and everyone's so gracious and kind and encouraging to one another I've noticed in the past. So if we can all kind of like build each other up and encourage each other, um, as the Bible says we are supposed to, then I mean, what a blessing that would be, but um, yeah, I just felt this conviction to share my story. I was going to share it a year or so ago, but um, I didn't for whatever reason. Maybe I wasn't ready. I don't know, um, but I'm just hoping that this, this reaches someone. I want you to know that Jesus loves you so much and he has great plans for you, plans you can't even fathom or imagine. He has a future and a hope plan for you that does not include pornography. Pornography wrecks marriages, it wrecks families, it, work, it wrecks your soul if, if you don't repent from it. And he just wants you to have freedom. He wants you to have deliverance from this bondage and this slavery. Um, and so I, I'm praying for all of you. Um, and if we can just continue to pray for each other. That would be so great. Um, a, a great resource to maybe check out if you if you aren't familiar with this resource is fightthenewdrug.org. I don't know why I'm stumbling over my words, but I believe it's fightthenewdrug.org. Um, maybe Google that. It might not be .org. It could be .com. I'm not sure, but that's a really great resource if you want to know more about. Um, the effects pornography has on your brain and your relationships and it's just a really great community. Um, the Bible is also a great resource, maybe just looking up uh, Bible verses on sexual immorality but also on gra uh, grace and love and, and the gospel, um, maybe starting in, in John. So. Yeah, I just hope this encourages someone, um, and I will see you in the next video.